What happened the day I met Cecilia? I remember pretty much as if it was yesterday. Driving to Krugersdorp. I was driving my car following Rhea behind her. Because I obviously didn't know where Cecilia stayed. And I didn't know at that point. But everybody that met Cecilia had to be introduced to her by Rhea, uh, unless she obviously accidentally met them, um, you know, just like on the street or while she was out. So she would then meet them willingly on her own. You couldn't just pitch up at her house or just randomly send her a message. You had to, the whole introduction had to be preordained if you want to use fancy words. So Rhea had to mention you in extreme detail to Cecilia. And then Cecilia would have to think about whether she would be interested in meeting you. And then she would only meet with you at the coffee shop, uh, at the hospital that is across from where she stayed, not at her house. And of course, this all had to be set to a specific date and time. Now, you know, Andrea always had to be there. So, probably, be, Rhea probably had to be there because Rhea, well, Cecilia met a lot of people through Rhea, but more specifically, Cecilia ultimately was trying to grow her group, and Rhea was the best source for doing this, to recruit people into Cecilia's group, although uh, no one actually knew about this, especially Rhea, until much later, like years down the line after uh, everything was exposed, basically. Um, Rhea was used for recruiting people mostly, and I was used for finances mostly. Everyone in the group had a reason for being there, something Cecilia could use you for. If she didn't see a reason for, well, she didn't see a use for you, then she didn't want to know you. So, but anyway, so I followed Rhea in my car to Cecilia's house, and um, I'll never forget this moment. I was actually really confused. I mean, most times, I think most people at least, when you're about to meet somebody, if you haven't seen a picture of them, obviously you've got this preconceived idea of what they could or should or would look like, at least to some degree. Um, and especially if you're told details about this person, you know, the ideas start rolling of what they could look like. I don't know if it's just a preset thing that your mind does, but... So, you know... With Cecilia coming from an occult background, I expected her to possibly look something like a goth person or something like someone you would say, okay, I can see you into Satanism because you're dressed like this. You know, you got the black hair, black clothes, dark makeup, satanic tattoos, something along those lines, you know. And, um, and of course, the house... Or the place where she, this person would stay, or where Cecilia would stay, I would expect to see a house that was not so normal, so she should have, technically speaking, I guess you could say, she should have had strange objects that were satanic, uh, or questionable at the very least. Um, but anyway, so we park our cars, we are walks in front of me, knocks on Cecilia's door and just once and then opens it because Cecilia never locked her door. And I followed Rhea in behind her. Now Rhea and I were pretty much the same height. Rhea just a little bit shorter than me. But <laughs> Cecilia was in her, lo her well, lounge TV room. Her husband was there watching TV. Cecilia sitting there. Rhea walks in, she greets Rhea, next minute Cecilia sees me behind Rhea, 
the look on Cecilia's face completely confused me. I mean, you get the usual, I guess you could say, confused looks when someone random is just brought to your house. It's in general confused, like, oh, like, who's this look? Like, oh, you brought someone. Whatever the thought is running through that person's mind. But not none of that describes Cecilia's look. I mean, obviously, yeah, she was thinking that. But that wasn't the look on her face. It was a total look of shock. Possibly bordering on horror. Like, basically to say, you brought someone here. Who is this person? It was a very abrupt, defensive, shocked... I don't even know what the right word is, um, type look on her face, a very disgusted look, but the primary one being, well, disgustingly shocked, I guess, would be accurate. And Cecilia was very quiet. I don't even recall her saying hello to me. I mean, I, when Rhea introduced me, I said hello, and Cecilia just looked at me. And she was very, very quiet. Awkwardly quiet, actually. But, I mean, everyone's different. Some are talkative, some are not, some are... But Cecilia was... Her whole presence was very out of place. I mean, she was in her own home. But she felt very out of place. It was actually so apparent that I remember thinking... Maybe she's not sure how to be around me because... I'm a new person, and she probably gathers that I've heard about her past, and she's wondering what I think about her, and she's probably assuming I'm judging her. That was my reasoning. Ah, uh, none of that was accurate, obviously. But, um, the first time, the, that first moment when I saw Cecilia, I don't know what the look was on my face, but... I know I was confused. Completely confused. Cecilia looked like an ordinary plain Jane. Someone you wouldn't even look at twice. Someone you would not think anything suspicious of. She looked quite dramatically different to how she did by the time she ended on trial. Cecilia was very thin. She was... She was actually bulimic, which I found out about a month or two after meeting her. Um, her hair wasn't falling out as much. She actually had quite a bit more hair. Um, <coughs> very youthful appearance. Didn't look like anything like a disaster like she did on trial. But um, she... I had on baggy pants, baggy t-shirt, none of which was even black or grey, to, to, you know, come to think of it. She was wearing blue tracksuit pants and a white t-shirt. Um, she didn't actually look like she was capable of hurting a fly. And her house was just an ordinary place. There was absolutely nothing, 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 nothing that you could even remotely try and sway into the direction of her being potentially connected to anything satanic or occult. It was, there was absolutely zero evidence, zero indication of anything going in that direction. Um, in fact, if I remember correctly, Cecilia actually wore a small gold chain cross around her neck. But, I mean, later on in getting to know Cecilia, which was, she told me about, I don't know, a week or two later after knowing her there, one of the disguises, if you're a true occultist, is to wear things like a cross around your neck. So, <laughs> not that I can ever use that as a reason right now, because she was never part of the occult. 
but she did a lot of things to be part of it. Uh, I'm finding myself even feeling a bit confused now, so I can only imagine how outside how outsiders must feel about this whole scenario. But Cecilia was so plain, so. I think if you want to put it, if I if I compare myself to her in terms of the way I dress, in terms of what's in my home, or even just going back all those years to when I first met Cecilia, I think you would find more indications that you could have swayed off to me being connected to the occult than Cecilia. That's how innocent she looked. I mean, I think I was dressed in black when I wore, uh, when I met her. I have a habit of wearing primarily dark clothes, but definitely not for occult reasons or uh, belief reasons. Um, I suppose if I had to think about things that I, I mean, I lived with my parents, so if I think about what was in my room, you could more than likely find something that you could have swayed off in some kind of weird direction to me being connected to the occult. That's how, even though, like I said, definitely not connected, but that's how innocent and that's how unconnected Cecilia was or looked, appeared. There was nothing, but nothing but nothing that you could use to even remotely try and connect her to this whole facade that she was part of the occult or had been part of the occult I mean if you wanted to get bizarre I think the closest you could get was to say her kitchen life was her connection to the occult that's how extreme you'd have to get it would be so much easier if you could be plugged into my brain right now to see the memories that are flashing through my mind what was that moment seeing her I'd actually, in the time period with knowing Cecilia, in the early time period, I became, I don't know if you'd call it paranoid, but because Cecilia looked so innocent, so dramatically innocent, it made me somewhat paranoid, or maybe it actually did make me paranoid, that because of how she looked and what she actually was supposedly connected to or had been raised in and had done and all of that it made me paranoid about the people I would pass on the streets that also looked so innocent that looked I, I actually to be honest I remember looking at a lot of people that I'd pass in shops and on the streets wondering what you know what they really about are they really connected to Things like this. I remember even looking for if people would wear a crucifix. You know, and then <clears throat> just, it was just ridiculous how extreme, how someone from, that can look from one extreme, be connected, raised, and involved in another extreme. Our mind definitely couldn't comprehend it. But I was definitely trying to. I mean, I was analysing everybody around me, so... And even when Cecilia explained what the real occultists actually dress like and look like and the things they say and don't say, and then she would always add that the people that dress like goths or the people that look like Satanists are just your wannabes. They're nobody to actually worry about. They're just attention seekers. They just want to be like the real cultists, and so she'll go on. Yeah, it really makes your mind spin.